continuing chapter 5 with nested loops. That's all we're going to cover in this video. Going to be fun. Let's get right to it. As mentioned last time, loops can be nested inside other loops. And we went through this example, tracing it through the debugger in Thani in detail. But here's the output, just to revisit this as like a warm up to this video. We have this outer loop for i in range 1, 4. So it's going to loop three times when i is 1, when i is 2, and when i is 3. Now when i is 1, the very first iteration of that outer loop, what happens is this inner loop itself will iterate three times when j is 1 and 2 and 3. So if you notice the output, when i is 1, j will get the value of 1 and 2 and 3. This is the first iteration of that outer loop, and j takes on all values of 1, 2, and 3 on that inner loop. Then, once this inner loop completes, we go back to the outer loop, and then i becomes 2. So now when i is 2, we're going to run this inner loop again. And now j will get the value 1, 2, and 3 again, because for j in range 1, 4, j will iterate from 1 all the way to and including the number 3. So when i is 2, j will take on these values 1, 2, and 3. And then finally, when i is 3, that final iteration of the outer loop, once again, that inner loop will iterate a full three times. So something important to be aware of is that with a surprisingly short number of lines of code, we can be asking the computer to do something quite significant. If you look at these four lines of code, consider that this outer loop runs a thousand times. The inner loop within that for j in range a thousand, that also runs a thousand times for each time for each iteration of the outer loop, this j loop for j in range, it loops a thousand times for each one of the outer ones. And then for each one of those, this most inner loop for k in range 1000, it also loops 1000 times. How many total times did we just ask the computer to iterate? In short, we ask the computer to do something 1 billion times. That's huge. 1 billion things that we just asked the computer to do with four lines of code. So we have to be careful also when we have loops that are nesting within one another to think about that compound effect that takes place when we ask the user or ask the computer to do all those things. So here's also just an easy stretching exercise before we then want to uh, modify this problem and turn it into something requiring nested loops. But just as like a stretching, uh, warm-up exercise, if you will, write a program that will perform, uh, that will execute exactly what you see on the screen. We're gonna ask the user to enter an integer. We're gonna then print, uh, here are four lines, each one with an asterisk, and we're gonna print one asterisk per line. Try to pause the video. And based off of the user input, if they enter four, you should have this output. If they enter six, you should print the number six here, and you should have six lines, each line with an asterisk. Try to pause the video, go do that on your own, and then come back and I'll show you a solution, which I'll now get to. So coming over here to Thani, file new. Let's save this as, and I'm gonna call this, hmm, let's call it, star, no, let's call it triangle, triangle program. And you'll see why in a few minutes we're calling it triangle program. So we're going to ask the user. So prompt the user to enter an integer. So let's call this num equals int input, enter an integer, enter an integer. And now we want to print out print the statement. Here are blank lines. Here are blank lines, each with an asterisk. Asterisk colon. 
I just keep going back and forth to make sure I'm typing exactly what it asks. Perfect. But now we, of course, need to put a dot .format and put num there. Done. And so now, let me just run that before I actually print out the loop with the asterisks. asterisks. And we enter four. Here are four lines, each with an asterisk. Perfect. So now let's do a for loop. Now loop num number of times. So for i in range num. And what do we want to do here? We want to simply print out a single asterisk. Done. And when I run this code, enter an integer for we get this output. It looks pretty similar, but notice I should have had a new line. So let's go fix that. Put a new line right here. Run that again. Enter an integer for, and this is what we expect. Let's run this again with an integer three and then five. Enter an integer three. That's what we expect. And then finally five. That's what we expect. Perfect. That was the little stretch before the exercise. What is the exercise? We want to now do this, and now we print a triangle of asterisks. And let's go through this in detail, but first let me just go ahead and knock out that header. So let me just come right here, um, print the header for the triangle, print, put a new line, and now we print, and now we print a triangle of asterisks. And now we print a triangle of asterisks, colon, perfect. So just make sure that looks good. Let's run this. Let's put five. All right. So let's think about this now. The user entered the number four. That was easy. Just loop four times and print one asterisk per line. But now when they enter four, we also want to print this triangle. So there's a bit more thought involved, okay? The problem solving phase, we need to really focus here. What's really happening? Given this input of four, clearly we're gonna print four rows. But what happens? On the first row, we print one star. On this second row, we print two stars. On the third row, three stars. On the fourth row, four stars, and so on. So we already have this loop that we showed you for i in range num print star. Let's even now change this. Let's call that for row in range num print star. So here we have, again, the same four stars. And we're going to start with this overall loop. Let me come right here and let's put a comment. Uh, now print the triangle for row in range num print stars what we have and of course we're just going to have two sets of these four rows no big deal but let's think about this so we have this one loop that will iterate over the number of rows here's that first row well on the first row we want to print one star but at this second row we want to print not one star, we want to print two of these. And on the third row, we want to print three of these. How can you do that? Now, there's an easy Pythonic way. I don't want you to do the easy Pythonic way, even if you know it, because that defeats the purpose here. The purpose is we want to practice nested loops. So the idea is that inside this loop right here, here's this outer loop. Well, inside that loop, we want to make another loop that will print out those number of stars that we need per row. So imagine we're at this third row. We really want to make another loop in here that would be something like four, hmm, do I want to say four star? Four star in range, I won't do star, I'll just call this four i. Four i in range, and so here, if it was the third row, I would want to print three. Let me make sure we put here end equals, right? We want to not end after printing each star, right? The end equals, as you recall, that keeps us on that same row without putting a new line. So 
for row in range, let's say num was four, right? We're gonna loop four times. And now imagine, just imagine we're at the third row. For the third row, we would like to print three times all those stars. Now when I run this, uh, I need to put the word in, that's important. When I run this, we will not get the output we're expecting here. If I come type four, we're gonna get this huge, all of those stars together. And if you wonder why, well, because we did this end right here, right? We're saying never put a new line. Well, when do you wanna put a new line? Come back to think about this. When do you wanna put a new line? We wanna print each one of these three stars and we wanna put a new line finally once we've completed one row of stars, right? Once you've completed a row of stars, then and only then do we want to put a new line. So when have we completed one row? So think about that. Here, I'm gonna say loop over each row. And here would be a comment, print, print one row of stars. So this for loop that you see right here, this for loop, it's going to print one row of stars. Now, after you print the entire row, notice I'm coming back one level, one level of indentation. So after printing one row, now print a new line. So right here, we're just gonna print an empty new line. Now, if I had done that right here, test this, check this out. If I had not put this print statement here, but instead I put it here, watch the fail. We have every star on its own line. And why is that a fail? Because look at what happens. We're saying loop three times. What do we do for each one of those times? Print a star, don't put a new line. And then we say right here, oh yeah, go ahead and put a new line. Like, do you realize that that's a fail? Don't put a new line, that'd be a big brain if we did this right here. Don't put a new line, and then, hey, go ahead and put a new line. That would obviously be a fail. So we're not gonna print right there, but instead, once we print the entire row of stars, then we're going to print the new line. So this is still not gonna give us what we want, but we're getting closer. So now we have, check this out, we have every single row we looped because the user entered four, right? The user entered four. We have four rows and for each row we chose to loop three times. Now, what could we, what could we have done instead? What if I chose to loop four times? What's gonna happen? Every row will have four stars, right? Because we're looping the number of rows, which is num that the user entered. And I'm saying, so if user entered four here, Row will get the value zero, then one, then two, then three, right? It's gonna go as if from zero up to four. Really, I could have put from zero to num, right? So if, if I put four, this goes from zero up to three, we have the four rows. And then for each one of those rows, we're looping four times. What if I said loop two times per row? Well, then we get these two stars, or as I showed you, three times per row. We get these three stars per row. Well, we don't want one star for every row or two stars for every row or three or four stars for every row. We want the number of stars to change per row. So on the second row, we want two stars. On the third row, we want three stars. So pause the video and look at the code and ask yourself, what could you change? How can I make this inner for loop on a given row only print the number of stars required for that row. Pause the video, think about that, and then come back. The answer is since we already have this variable row that we're using for the outer for loop, we can use that variable right here. Now this is, we're almost there, we're not quite there yet, because remember row is gonna go from what? from zero up to, if the user had entered four, it'll go from zero to three. Which means now we're gonna say for i in range zero do this, well, nothing's gonna happen at that, at that particular iteration. So here, it's gonna be so close, but we're one off. 
what we really want to do is we want this row, we want this value to be 1 for the first row, 2 for the second row, 3 for the third row, and 4 for the fourth row. That's what we want, right? At the third row, we want to have the value 3 right here. Well, right now, what are the values that are going into that row variable? We're getting 0, then 1, then 2, then 3, right? This is looping from 0 up to 4, but not including 4. So it's getting 0, 1, 2, 3. So at the third row, the, the row value is really 2. So how can we make the third row, the row value, be, be 1? How can we, instead of going from 0 to 3, how can we go from 1 to 4? Well, we're going to make this 1 right here. And I'm going to make this plus 1. And so now, I'm looping from 1 all the way up to 4 and including 4, assuming the user entered 4. And at each iteration, I'm going to print the number of stars equal to that row value. Check it out. We finally made it. Here we are. Run this again. Nope, not, not debug it. Run it again. Let's put five stars, and there we are. That's a fun one, but it takes a bit of thought to figure out, okay, how do I loop this inner loop? How do I iterate it? A variable number of times. Meaning at the second row, how do I iterate that inner loop only two times? At the third row of stars right here, how do I iterate that inner loop only three times? And we do so with the realization that, hey, I can use my row number as my number of iterations right here within that inner loop, and that allows us to accomplish the goal. All right, let's go through three of these tracing problems that we discussed last time. I said we'd go through more of them. So here we go. Check yourself on tracing the following. Very important skill. I would encourage you to pause the video, see if you can do this on your own, and then come back as we do it together. So here we have two loops. We have a while loop, and we have a for loop. Let's first ask ourselves, how many times is this while loop going to iterate? We're going to go from 0, i starts at 0, and it's going to increment at every iteration of the outer loop, and it's going to go all the way to less than 5. So when i is 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. So this outer loop will iterate 5 times. Now for each one of those times, we come inside that outer loop and we see we have a for loop. This is interesting. So before we break it down, let's just start going through this. i starts at 0, and now when i is 0, we have this for loop. So let's process this for loop and see what's happening. For j in range, remember, remember i is 0, so from 0 to 1, and we count down by 1, well, nothing's going to happen, right? If you're counting down, this start value has to have a bigger number than the ending value. So nothing's actually going to occur here, and nothing, let's see, so nothing gets printed inside this for loop. We do not print j inside this for loop because this for loop actually does not execute. So the for loop won't execute, and then we print four stars, four asterisks. And now i increases by one, so i is now one, it was zero. And we come over here and we say is one less than five, it is. For j in range 1, 1, minus 1, even that will not execute. Even that will not execute. We see that uh, j in range 1, 1, minus 1, because we've already reached this ending number, remember, so if it had, if it had said 2, 1, minus 1, we would have iterated one time. Because if this had been 2, and this had been 1, that would say start at 2, go down to 1, but not including 1, step size of minus 1. And so we would have iterated once. But because i is currently 1, we don't even have a single iteration. So once again, we print just the four stars. We increment i, i becomes 2. And now we can finally do this inner for loop. For j in range, 2, 1, minus 1. So j has now the value 2, and we're going to print j. 
And now we subtract minus one from j, so j has the value of one, but it, it says stop once you get to one and don't execute that iteration. So that's all we print for j. And now we print four stars, and then we increment i, i becomes three. And now we do the, is three less than five? That's true. For j in range, j is three. Three down to one by step size of one. So now j is three. We're gonna print j. And now j becomes two, because we subtract one by it. j becomes two. We print the two. And we then exit that for loop. We print four stars. And I think you can see now the pattern. Now i is going to be four. Four is less than five. We're going to come to this for loop. For j in range four, one, minus one, we print j is four. We're going to print j. Uh, j becomes three. We're going to print the three. J then becomes two. We print the two. This had from four down to one. So now we're going to be arriving at that one. We don't print the J value and we print the four stars. That's this first one. As I mentioned last time, that's not easy. That requires practice. Imagine if you had an exam and you had to go trace through that without practicing. It would be a disaster or a big brain moment to not have practiced before an exam. So let's do another one. Trace this program. Here we have a while loop again. And inside the while loop, we have another for loop. So let's go through this one. I starts at five. While five is greater or equal to one, and notice what are we gonna do with I? We're gonna subtract it. So we're gonna iterate this outer while loop five times. When I is five, when I is four, three, two, and even one because it says while it's greater or equal to one. So just to get a bird's eye view of the loop, we're gonna iterate five times. And what happens each time? Well, let's look at the first one. I starts at five, num is one. For j in range, one comma, i plus one. So let's think about that. One comma, i plus one, i is five. So now we're gonna go from one up to six, but not including six. So it's gonna go from one up to five, so it'll iterate five times. And what are we going to print? We're gonna print num, which is one, that'll get printed, followed by three x's, because we're ending with, on each line, printing three x's. No big deal, it's kinda of weird. But print one, followed by three x's. Now we multiply num times two. Num was one multiply times two, so now num is two. And i is still five, but now j is two, and we're again gonna print the num value, which is two followed by three x's. Now i is five, j is three, but we just multiplied that num value times two again. It was two, now it's four, so we have four with three x's. And now we're going to multiply this num value again, which four times two is eight, and we're looping again. I is five, J is now four. We print the num value, which is eight, followed by three X's, and then finally we print 16 by three X's, and we then print a new line. We decrement I, so I is now four, and we enter the loop. Is four greater than or equal to one? It is, and we just do the same thing again. Num starts over at one, for j in range one comma five, but not including five, since i is now four, we do the same thing again, and you can really probably quickly see it's gonna have the exact same output, but one less. Then i becomes three, and you print these three values. When i becomes two, you print these two values. And then finally, when i is one, you print that last one. Again, challenging without practice. We have one more. While i is less than or equal to five, we now want to, first bird's eye view, see how many times we're gonna iterate this. We're going to start at one, we're gonna add one at every iteration, and we loop as long as i is less than or equal to five. So it looks like the outer loop will have again five iterations. Let's look at this inner loop. For j in range, so i starts at one, for j in range one comma one plus i plus one, which is two, so this will iterate one time on that outer iteration. So for j in range one comma two, print num, 
with a G afterwards. So we print num, which is currently just one, with a G afterwards. And now we multiply num, or no, we don't multiply, now we're adding. We add two to num, so now num is three. However, the J loop already finished. J was one, and it only goes up to two, but not including two. So that loop is already done. So we're gonna print a new line. Now I becomes two, and J is now gonna, this J, range, J loop goes from for J in range one up to three, but not including three. So it, it will iterate twice. We're going to print num, which reset to one, followed by a G. So we did that. Now we add two to num. So num becomes one plus two is three. And now J is two. And so we're at the second iteration of this inner for loop. And we're printing the num value, which is three, followed by a G. Now we finish that for loop. So we print a new line and we increment I. I becomes three. Is three less than or equal to five? It is. So we're going to enter the outer while loop. Num is one. We're going to say for j in range, one comma three plus one, one comma four. So we iterate three times. And we're going to print num, which is one followed by a g. We add two to num, so then we print three with a g. We add two to num, and then we print five with a g. So you can see the pattern. Once you've done like the first usually three iterations, we can see the pattern. Here's when i is four, and then when i is five, we have the exact same thing, but it's gonna now print five times, ending with nine and g. A very important skill to be able to trace through a set of nested loops, something you absolutely need to practice. All right, I'm trying to be cognizant of time. We're almost at 27 minutes. One problem left, this can take about seven or eight minutes. So we're gonna do our best multiplication table. Write a program that will display this multiplication table for the user. And I will tell you, there's a lot going on there. When I look at this table, I'm, I'm thinking how a student would initially approach this, uh, which would probably be a little bit of crying maybe. Uh, but once you get over the crying and the anger, and then you go back to, okay, let's actually try to figure it out. I love playing with my stream deck here. Um, yeah, you're like, okay, well, what's going on here? We have a lot of rows, and for every row, we have a lot of, of columns of data that really need to be printed. Think of this like almost like an Excel sheet. All these rows and these columns of data that need to be printed. We see here at row five, for example, at the when at this two column, it's five times two is 10. This three column, five times three is 15. 5 times 4 is 20, 5 times 5 25. So we can see what's going on, right? When I have a 5 and I have an 8, I have to print a 40. Then 5 times 9, 45. Once I print that 45, I need to print a new line and come all the way back and now do the same thing for 6. 6 times 1, 6 times 2, 6 times 3, 6 times 4, all the way to 6 times 7, 6 times 8, 6 times 9. Put a new line, come do the same thing for 7. A lot to think about, right? Problem solving phase is critical here. So how many loops do we need? Well, you're going to need two loops. You need one loop for every row. And then within each row, you need another loop to print all of the columns of data for that row. So the outer loop is going to iterate nine times, right? One for each row. And I would encourage you to actually use the word row as the variable name. It makes it easier. So code that up and then let's make sure we are, we're comfortable with what's being printed. So let's actually come over here file, new, save, let's call this multiplication table. All right, put some new lines in here, so enters, and let's do a for loop. For row in range nine. Let's just print out row. You know what, let's do one nine. Nine would go from zero to eight. We actually wanna to go to one all the way to nine, so just one 10 actually, right? Now let's print out just row. Let's see what we get. We should get one through nine, perfect. All right, so we've done that. Now for each iteration of that outer loop, we will have an inner loop. And that inner loop will iterate nine times, right? So if I come back to here, and I look when I'm at five, for example, what do I wanna print on this row right here? I wanna print five times one, five times two, five times three times four, all the way to five times eight, five times nine. So we don't wanna just print five, 
we really want to do another for loop that's also going to, let's call this for call in range, 1 comma 10. And what do we really want to print? We really want to, we really want to print just row times call. That's what we want to print. Now, when you run this, that's going to give you all kinds of numbers, which may or may, you may or may not be able to tell if they're accurate or not. Um, here, we really have 1 times 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, which is correct. Then we have 2 times those numbers, which you might be able to visualize and see are correct. That actually looks pretty legit. Let's come put this in formatted printing really quickly. So how about we print a placeholder dot format row times call. And even we have to end with nothing. Don't put a new line. And now here, after printing one row, print a new line. So here we're going to print a new line, just like on that previous example. So we print a new line. And let's see. Let's put some formatting in here. Let's make this... So I'm trying to see which way are each of these columns aligned. Are they right aligned or are they left aligned? And I can see here that they are right aligned because if you look at this 8 and the 16, so they are right aligned and it looks like each of these columns has a width of four characters. I'm just trying to count one, two, three, four. So these are going to be right aligned, four characters, and it's an integer. Let's run this and then talk about it. Some of you are like, wait, how did that happen? Well, think about it. When row is 5, for example, let's pretend row was 5. What am I really printing on that fifth row? Well, I'm going to highlight it. What's being printed here? What's being printed is when row is 5, I'm going to take 5 and multiply it by all of these values 1 through 9. So 5 times 1, 5 times 2, 5 times 3, times 4, times 5, times 6, times 7, times 8 times 9. And once I'm done printing that row, what do I do? I print a new line. And now row becomes 6, right? No way am I going to debug this whole thing. But if it helps you, no harm. Come in and just debug quickly, right? So here I have the value. I'm printing 1 times 1. I print it. Now I print 1 times 2. It prints. Then 1 times 3. You see it print. 1 times 4. I'm going to go through one row. I'm, I'm hitting F7 constantly, as fast as I can. We're at 1 times 5. We are at 1 times 6. We're, this is all right now, notice, this is all when row is still 1, right? 1 times 7. We are at 1 times 8. And now we are at 1, one times 9. The call value finally became 9. The row value is 1. 1 times 9, we print that, and we exit this for inner for loop. We print a new line, and now row is 2. So now that row is 2, you see over here, column is still 9, but that's about to change. For call in range 1, 10, column now has the value 1, and it starts all over again. We say, what is 2 times 1? You print 2. What is 2 times 2? It prints it's four. What is two times three? And it prints six. And I'll do one more, and it prints eight. If you really want to debug the whole thing and go through it, you can. It'll just take a while. But worthy of doing so if there's any confusion on how, when I run this, we get that output. Now, if we wanted to finish the program, what does the program really say? Uh, it says to print this whole table. What we really did is print just this inner portion. Kind of challenging is to think about, okay, well, now how do I go print this, what comes before each row? Let's try to do that. One, two, three, four. Okay, so there's really, let me count again. One, two, three, four. So there's actually four characters that are printed before printing the inner. And so before printing, let's look at this row of five. Before printing all of the answers, like five times one, five times two, five times three, we see we really print a 5, then we print a space, then we print this vertical line, and then we print one more space. And where does that happen? That happens before printing a row. So comments are important. Here is print one row of answers. So before printing the row, 
ay, ay, ay. Before printing the row of answers, before printing the answers, print the row header, header information. So what do I want to print here? I want to print the row number, a space, a vertical line in a space. So I'm going to do placeholder, a space, a vertical line, which is by the backslash, a space, dot format, row. Oh, and I need to make sure I put end equals so I don't go to the next line. So check that out. That's exactly what we wanted. What comes next is to print all of the, or what comes above this is to print all of these dashes, which is, I don't even want to, do I want to do that in a loop? I'm not going to do that in a loop. I could get all fancy. We're not going to do that in a loop. So first of all, let me put a comment here. Uh, for each no, or loop over all the rows. Cool. And what comes up here? Uh, print. We want to print out all those dashes, which it's one, two, three, four. And then we have nine sets of those. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And we had one extra dash to the right of that, if I saw it correctly. Right? We had one extra dash to the right of the nine for whatever reason. That's now correct. And then finally, above that, we need to print out this information. So we need to print the word multiplication table. So let's put a comment. Print the header information. So print multiplication table. How many spaces is that? That's going to be four, four, and I think three. It's just a guess. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Multiplication table. Let me run this and see. Did I line it up? The M was above the 2. Perfect. M was above the 2. Some of you are wondering, how do you get that? Well, I'm, I, I know that right here, there was 4 spaces, and then each column was 4 spaces. That's 4 and 4 is 8. And then I have 1, 2, 3 more spaces, so I had 11 spaces. So I just put 11 spaces right here. And then finally, we need to now print this. So it would be better to do that inside a loop. And what's going to happen here is we're really going to print. Um, we're going to print just one, two, three, four spaces. Because we had these first four spaces to print. But then for each of these nine numbers, I'm really going to print that number aligned to the right over four characters. Because I've already done that for each of these columns below, right? I saw that this was a line to the right over four characters. So that's what this is up here. We have four characters. It's a line to the right for each one of these. So after printing those first four spaces, I can just do this. Four row in range. I need to make an independent for loop, one comma 10. And here I'm going to print. I'm going to highlight this exact same thing, really. I'm going to print this, but without, I'm not going to use row and column. I'm just using here row. I'm trying to print the row number, and I want to stay on the same line. And if you don't follow all of that, it's okay because I'm going quick. But that is the result. So now that you see the result and you see that it works, try to make sense of what I did here. You didn't have to. I mean, you could have just, really, you could have just, instead of doing all of that, you're like, you know what, screw that. I'm just going to print this. And you could have just tried to fudge it, right? Uh, that would have worked. I mean, just doing that, hard coding it, that is going to work just fine. You get the same output. But the way I had coded it, as you see here, is now it's more dynamic. What do I mean by that? So I could have chosen 12, 12, 12. And now we get a larger table from 1 to 11, right? Of course, it's misaligned because now we get three-digit numbers over here. So here, let's do from just 1 to 10, but even that last number will be... Well, let's make it smaller. Let's say you just only wanted to practice the first six numbers, 1 through 6, right? So here is that same multiplication table of 1 through 6. 
So it's better to have it dynamically done, uh, which is why I did not, which is why I chose to make this first header, this first header information here. I chose to print that within this for loop. Let's run that again and we'll end by, uh oh, I did something wrong here. That should have been 10, not 107. So there we go. So what did I do here? I printed multiplication table. I then printed these first four spaces right here. Now, why did I print those first four spaces independent of what gets printed in this for loop? Because what got printed in this for loop, you want to be consistent. We have to print four spaces with a digit right aligned, then four spaces with the next row value right aligned, then the next four spaces with the row value right aligned, and the next four with the row value right aligned. So when you work yourself, when you work and you go to the left side, and you realize, well, that's the first thing that gets printed. Let me highlight all four spaces right here. So we realize that there's still four spaces to the left of even that that needs to get printed, these four. So I print those four spaces. I keep my cursor on the same line. I then loop nine times from one to 10, not including 10. And I then print merely the row value. And then I print a new line afterwards. Not going to repeat any of that because if you need to hear it again, you can rewind, play it again. But in fairness, that's a lot. That's a bit to take in. You got to let that sink in. Brain might be jello right now. That's okay. Go through it. Uh, I'm going to pause on the video when I see a solution here so you can see if it's done any differently. Probably the solution I just coded live is a bit better than this. But here's another solution. But that's it. We are done. Let's go. As always, reach out, ask questions if you have any. Take care, everyone.